Hello everybody, welcome to this short introduction video into Station Scout Online. You've probably got an email with a link to Station Scout Online where you can schedule a demo. Select the date and time and type in all the information like name, role, company, country and phone number. Click on schedule event and you will immediately get a um, confirmation email from Station Scout Online. Right before your session will start, you will get another email with the access link. Let's click on it. You will see a first step guide explaining how to upload your SCD file, but I will show you later on how to do that. On the bottom right corner, you can download the Getting Started document. You can use this Getting Started document as a guide. Just a couple of words on how Station Scout Online works. It's basically an MBX1 together with a Station Scout software installed in a data center and made accessible by the web browser. If you need additional information, go to the right upper corner and click on the help icon. If you want to change language, you can click on the language icon on the right upper corner. Currently only English and German are supported. The current view is called the substation view. In the middle you can see the zero line diagram. You can see the simulation and life status button. On the left side we have the menu like device configuration and substation view. And locks. The zero line diagram is a simplification of a single line diagram showing all the equipments and the related IDs. In the zero line view we can click on the voltage level, on the bay level, on the IDs as well as on the equipment like circuit breaker and disconnect. Whenever we click on an ID on the right side, in the detail view, you can see status information, IP address, vendor and the model. Below, you can switch the simulation mode and add test cases. We will cover this later on. Then we have the ID function group, like protection, interlocking, measurement and so on. At the bottom, from the detail view, we can see the communication section, with the sending and the receiving parts. We can filter the communication. In the right upper corner, there is a legend. We can click on Sampled Value, Reports and Goose or select Sending or Receiving Signals. Every IED function is a hyperlink. Whenever you click on it, you get to the detail view. In this case, this is the logical node CSWI. There is one associated signal, like the switch controller position. For example, we can select the circuit breaker in the zero line and see in the detail section all the associated signals, like the interlocking signals, switch controller and circuit breaker. These signals are mapped in the substation section of your SCL file. If they are missing, they won't show up here. We are currently not connected to a substation, so all the quality and time sense are missing. As I said, Station Sky Online is in a data center and next to this setup we built a virtual substation. This virtual substation is already connected to the MBX1 with the port A. In order to connect to this virtual substation, we have to go to the device configuration and set the IP address. The IP address is 192.168.1.10. Click on apply and let's configure also the time configuration server. The virtual substation has a built-in SNTP server. So let's type in the NTP server IP address. This is 
1.1 and you will see the time server is synchronized. Let's get back to the substation view and on the bottom we have the simulation and live status button. Let's click on on. As you can see the icon of the IDs have been changed. And in the detail view on the right side you will see the status showing the ID is connected. There is one ID showing a different icon. It's Q1 from field Q05. If we click on it, you can see a yellow warning field in the detail view showing that the connection has failed. If we wait a little bit, additional warning will appear. You can see warning signs in the detail view as well as in the zero line. But the Station Scout has a simulation feature where we can simulate missing IDs. In order to do this, we will switch off the simulation and live status. Select Q1 from field Q05 and in the detail view we click on the simulation flag. As you can see, the ID icon has changed, showing that the ID is simulated. Let's click on the ON button in the simulation and live status and you will see the ID is connected to the virtual substation and simulated. There are no goose error anymore, as you can see, because Station Scout is simulating the missing goose. The simulation feature is a powerful tool. If you want to test your complete signal list, you can just click on the corresponding function group and change the status of all signals. If you want to change your signal name, just click on the pencil icon and let's type in, for example, SF6 gas alarm. And we can toggle from false to true and in doing so, testing our signal list. We can go back by clicking on the arrow icon and start with our first test. Let's do an interlocking test and select the first ID in field Q01. As you can see, the QB1 disconnector shows it is interlocked. This is because QB2 is closed. Just keep in mind the virtual substation has only a limited interlocking function implemented. So just QB1, QB2 and QA1 are in the interlocking logic. So do not expect a full interlocking logic in the virtual substation. So we can select QB2 and open the disconnector. But first let's mouse over a signal like the QB2 enable close or enable open. As you can see, the pop-up shows additional information like value, quality and time. In this case, we are connected to the virtual substation. But keep in mind, these are real signals. Station Scout can act as a client. So let's click on the disconnector icon and select open and execute. As you can see, QB1 is not interlocked anymore. But if you want a more efficient way to test interlocking, Station Scout offers a watch list. A watch list is basically a list of most used signals. For example, if you want to change disconnected position just add it to the watch list by clicking on this pin icon in the detail view. We can add the whole group like the interlocking or the single signals. In the right upper corner you can click on the section watch list and as you can see all the signals we've added before are listed in this view. We can change all the signal status from this view and so be a little bit faster when testing interlocking or signal lists. 
For example, let's check the QB2 interlocking. First we close the QB1 and see if the interlocking icon will appear. As you can see, QB2 is now interlocked. Let's try to close QB2, even though it is interlocked, and see what's happening. As you might expect, there is an error message. So let's reopen QB1 again and click on Q1. We will do the same test now by using a test case. This is a more organized way on how to test interlocking or other functionalities. On the right side, there is a new section. The test case setup has two different sections. One is for assessment and one for the control. Assessment are all the signals we would like to check if they are changing according to our requirement. The control section has all the signals we want to change, like the disconnector position or a GGIO. So to add signals to the assessment section, let's select QB1. And in the detail view, we can add the whole group or the single signals by clicking on the arrow icon. And as you can see, the signal appear in the assessment section. Let's click on the control section and add the switch controller signals. We can also change the name of the test case. Let's give it another name, like test case interlocking, and click on finish setup. And as you can see, one test step is already prepared and not executed. We can add another test step or execute the test step. We can add a description like QB1 interlocking. We are going to watch for these signals, if they are changing from true to false, and we are changing the signals in the control section, like the disconnector QB2. Let's close it and see what's happening. So QB1 enable close becomes false, as expected. Let's click on past, and if you like, you can add a comment. So we can add another test step. You can have several test steps which belong to a test case. The assessment and the control signals are part of the test case setup. And every test step uses the same assessment and control signals. So in the next test step, we are using the same assessment and control signals, but testing the QB2 interlocking. Before we are doing the QB2 interlocking test, let's open the QB2. So let's change the description and close QB1. And as you can see, the QB2 interlocking enable becomes false. Let's click on past and add another test step. Just keep in mind, we are doing basic interlocking tests and not all cases. This is just for demonstration purpose. So QB1 is closed and QB2 is interlocked. Let's try to close QB2 and see what's happening. As you might expect, there is an error message. We can add another description and click on past. We can navigate back by using the arrow or clicking on this icon and go back to the overview. As you can see, 
all the tests that are passed. A great feature in Station Scout is the ability to copy test cases to another field. This is very useful if you have typicals and copies. In our case, Q1 from Q01 is a transformer field and Q1 from Q04 is also a transformer field. So let's copy the test case we've done before to the Q04 by selecting this icon and select Q04, Q1. Duplicate and let's go to Q1 from Q04. And as you expect, the test case is already there. If you click on it, you can see all the single test steps which are not executed because we are just copy the test case setup and the test steps without the results. There is one difference compared to the previous test step. We can see red highlights. These red highlights show how the test has been done in the previous version. This means QB2 was closed and the QB1 enable close interlocking was false. So let's close QB2 and see what's happening. Enable close of QB1 is false and the red highlights are gone. Let's click on past and go to the next test step. Just click on failed and the next step again failed just to see how it looks like in the overview and if you want you can clear all the assessment and redo the test. If you want to export all the test results we can export it by clicking this icon. The preview will open and you can click copy to the clipboard where you can paste it into a Word document or something else. So we have done three different ways of testing. The first one was by directly changing the status, the second one using the watch list and the third one using the test case. Station Scout Online allows you to upload your own SCL file. But keep in mind the virtual substation won't work anymore because the virtual substation has an older data model. Let's click on File and then select New. Station Scout asks for saving. Let's click on No because this is just a preloaded project. If you would like to reload our sample project, just click on Refresh on your browser and Station Scout will automatically preload our project. If you want to upload your SFI, click on File Transfer, Upload, select your STL file and click on Open and the pop-up shows the STL file has been uploaded. And then let's select Import STL file under the menu File. Just keep in mind we are now in the server environment. This is not your desktop so you have to select the thin disk folder and select the SCL file which you uploaded before. So now we can select which IDs we want to import into Station Scout. We can select the different voltage level, RQ and so on. Let's click on import and see what's happening. So the SCL file is visualized. So hope you enjoyed this short introduction video. If you have any question, just write an email to info.puk at omicronenergy.com.